Somebody bought a painting last night for $142 million. Let's dwell on that. I'll continue with the story in a second, but let that marinate. Yeah, this pisses me off. The story pisses me off. I get it. I'm a capitalist. I, you know, make whatever you want, work as hard as you can, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But is there no uh, line where we say, you're a douchebag. You're a douchebag. Let me give you more information. It's, it's an Irish-born British painter, whatever that means, <laughs> there's a lot of different things there, uh, named Francis Bacon, and it's his three studies of Lucian Freud. And this actually, uh, I don't know if it's Freud's son or grandson or whatever it is, and it's the painting of uh, him sitting there and, I don't know, doing something with his foot. I, I saw the painting, it's not that nice. It's not that nice. And then people are, oh, well, you don't understand art, my good chap. I don't need to understand art to know that that is $142 million completely wasted. So this is a record for the most expensive painting sale ever. But what I want to discuss is, number one, we, again, we know it's insane, so we don't need to dwell any further on that. Not to mention people are dying and starving with no health care and the record levels of income inequality and how can somebody be such a heartless bastard to waste their money on this. But uh, Business Insider, which is where I read about this, which is actually an awesome publication. They do a great job. But the writer of this article is a guy by the name of Rob Weil. He defended this. He said, uh, the mechanics of the art would suggest that the amount is justified or justifiable. He says, quote, first, as a triptych, the buyer is actually getting three paintings for the price of one. Oh, wow. Well, in that case, boy, do I stand corrected. It was three paintings for 142 million? Geez, I was a dick for thinking that's a waste of money. Haha, <laughs> so if he's getting three paintings, well, then obviously 142 million is right in the price range that makes sense. He continues, quote, Plus, for a decade after their initial 1970 exhibition, the works were displayed separately. I don't even know what that means. Why would that make it more valuable? So the fucking paintings were held separately. And then you bring them together and all of a sudden the price skyrockets by $80 million or whatever it is? Is this really how fickle people are? He's not done yet. Quote, scale can also affect price. And each of the canvases in Freud, this is the name of the painting, are six feet tall. And the brightness of the painting can also drive up its value. And the top half of the painting glows with orange and yellow. Oh, it's glorious. Oh, glorious. The dude just argued the painting is worth $142 million because it's colorful. I have a two-year-old nephew that could give you a mean, colorful crayon drawing. Will you give me $142 million if I give you that? And I'll split it with my nephew? Fuck, we'll be kind. Just half of that. Half of that. $71 million. That's it. That's all we're asking. That's it. That, roughly $70 million, we'll call it a day. But this is, I mean, this is like, this is so sad. It's such a bad argument. And then, um... There's, final thing here, there, there's a name for this. It's called the snob effect. And it's, it's, you set up this illusion of market value being through the roof on something, and then idiots with a shitload of money fall for it, hook, line, and sinker. They think the allure is too much, and it's a real thing we're talking about. And it's like uh, with wine tasting, for example. A lot of people are, uh, you know, wine experts, so to speak. And uh, they say, well, this one's inferior, and this one's superior. Meanwhile, when you actually do taste tests, you know which wine has won uh, consistently? The cheapest wines win. Yeah. Here's my response to this segment. Tax the rich just a little bit more. Not a lot more, just a little bit more. I think they can afford it.